Okay, let's talk about overturning moment and safety factor and solve a couple of questions. When they are under lateral loads like earthquake or wind, buildings have a tendency to tip over on one side, especially tall and slender buildings. This load can be calculated by multiplication of the lateral load and its distance to the moment point. So this is very important because when you find the overturning moment, you can now calculate how heavy or how stable your building should be to resist against this lateral loads and their overturning effect. And when structural engineers design a building, they usually multiply the overturning moment with a safety factor to find the stability of the building itself. Because the loads of the building itself, which typically applies from its center of mass, is going to come into effect to resist against this lateral load. So let's do a couple of questions to understand the issue better. This question has three parts. I call it question 1A. So based on the information given below, what is the overturning moment on this wall? Please take a minute and come back to see the answer. So as you can see here, we have a wall with a five kips of lateral loads. I don't know what that is exactly, but it is showing on horizontal direction. And the wall itself is 24 feet tall and it's 18 foot wide and the wall's weight is 20 kips so based on this information this lateral load is pushing from left to right on this wall we are going to have some moment reaction or overturning reaction at the other end on the ground so overturning moment is usually calculated to make sure that your building, your wall, is able to resist these lateral loads. If they are not, you should provide enough anchorage to the ground. So let's look at where this overturning action is happening. So when you look at this diagram, you can see that I marked with an X the moment point because when my load is pushing the wall from left to right, that is where the wall wants to tip over and this overturning moment can be calculated as usual by multiplying the loads times the distance remember that's how we calculated moment so loads here is five kips and their distance to the moment point is 24 feet so five times 24 feet is going to give you the overturning moment which is 120 foot kips so now let's go to the second portion of this question question 1b which says, based on the information given below, what is the restoring moment on this wall? Uh, again, please take a minute and come back to see the answer. Okay, welcome back. Let's look at our answer. Again, the rules of moment doesn't change. Moment is load times distance. In this case, it's asking us the restoring moment, or they sometimes call it as resisting moment or stabilizing moment. Why? Because this is the force that you embody in your wall or your structure that is going to resist against the overturning effects of that lateral load, and it is going to stabilize your building. So in this case, our wall's weight is 20 kips, and since this is a rectangle, we know that the center of the mass is at the center of the width which is 18 foot so this load is going to apply from the very center of this wall which is nine feet away from that moment point so to calculate the restoring moment you have to multiply that weight of the wall which is 20 kips times nine feet which is the distance from that center of mass to the moment point this is going to give you 180 foot kips the dead weight of the shear wall is assumed to resist the overturning or uplifting effect of the lateral loads. It has to be higher than the overturning moment to safely stabilize the wall. So when you look at the answer of the last question, you would remember that the overturning moment was 120 and our restoring moment is 180. So this means we have a very stable wall because there's a 60 foot kips difference between the overturning moment and the stabilizing moment. So why do we have this difference? We have this difference 
because of something called safety factor. Our wall is beefed up or got stronger than overturning moments, which is 120 kips. So let's continue to the third portion of our question to understand this better. Question 1C. Again, based on the information given below, what is the safety factor of this wall? So now we know the overturning moment and we know restoring moment of this wall. It's easier to find the ratio between these two and decide the safety factor. So please take maybe 30 seconds and come back to see the answer. Safety factor is the ratio between restoring moment and overturning moment. And it is typically suggested to be minimum 1.5 by building codes because the resisting loads of the wall have to be higher than the overturning moment so it can stabilize the wall. So when you divide 180 to 120 here, you are gonna get 1.5, which is the minimum requirement by building codes. Thanks so much for listening. For more questions on this topic, please visit my website and subscribe to the video lectures. I wish you all really good luck with your studies and exams. Bye-bye.